made us. He's the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't really approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered. standing we are going to read together psalm 23 i remember when you were we were younger in the sunday school that would be the first thing that they will ask you on sunday when you are when we are children i just say read psalm 23 the lord's shepherd the lord's, the, uh, the lord is my shepherd praise the lord uh, it doesn't matter the version that you have i have the new king james version with me that's what i use can have any version. We're going to read together at the count of three. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. One, two, three, go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Louder voice. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's just look onto Genesis chapter 3. And I just want to read just only one verse there. We have read the Lord, uh, we have read that we have read Psalm 23 that the Lord is our shepherd. And we just want to read verse 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? The, the Lord God called to a Adam and said to him, where are you? Today, by the special grace of God, the Holy Spirit is uh, teaching us on a subject titled, Going by the Leading of the Spirit. Or Moving by the Leading of the Spirit. God wants all of us to go by the leading of the Spirit. In some occasions, we want to lead ourselves by ourselves. But when we try it, we find it that it is a very terrible thing to do. Once we have given our life to Jesus Christ, we do not own our lives for ourselves anymore. And that is just what I want everybody to understand. Galatians 2 verse 20. I always quote this all the time. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives inside me. Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live by faith, I live, the life that I live, I live by faith in Christ Jesus, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. We are no longer living our lives for ourselves. Christ lives inside us. That was the reason why the Bible says in the book of uh, 1 John chapter 4, in verse 4, he said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So the one that is in us is the one that is leading us. This is the time of pandemic, but the Holy Spirit will see us through in the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will see us through in Jesus' name. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, in verse 16, the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the work of the flesh. When we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the work of the flesh. If I were to tell you the truth and which everybody will agree, the flesh wants to do everything that it pleases in. The flesh wants to, in time of fasting, the flesh wants to eat. In the time everybody is praying, the flesh wants to be reading magazine. Or be making phone calls. There are things that we have to do that until we begin to discipline our body and put it to subjection, we will not be able to come into the realization of the thing of, of the, the thing of God. The word of
of God made us to understand, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27. Say, one thing I do, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26 and 27. Say, one thing I do, I discipline my body and put it into subjection that while I have preached to others, I should not become disqualified. We need to put our, our body into subjection. Is that in verse 27? We need to put our, our body into subjection. While we have preached to others, we will not become disqualified. The good thing about it is that look at Psalm 23. Walk, I want to lead, let Holy Spirit lead us in everything that we are doing. I want everybody to be subject to the Holy Spirit. When you are subject to the Holy Spirit, you can never make any mistake. When you are subject to the Holy Spirit, you can never make any, there will be no regret. You want to get married? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. You want to build a house? Don't say because you have the money. Still let the Holy Spirit lead you. There are some things that we have. We have, we have opportunity to do, but it might not be what God wants us to do. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12, he said, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. If you want to build a house, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You are going for a journey, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You want to relocate, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You need something, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You are going for a particular program, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You want to change your, your career, let the Holy Spirit lead you. You want to move into another region, let the Holy Spirit lead you. When the Holy Spirit says go, he is with you, he will build you up and he will go with you and he will lead you. Everything that we are doing, let the Spirit of the Lord lead us. When we can be, well, until we allow the Spirit to lead us, we are not yet surrendered. You have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, but you are not yet surrendered until you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because the Spirit will lead us and will make us to do the right thing. Let us look onto Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 5. Romans chapter 8. Romans, the book of Romans chapter 8. I want everybody to go there. And I want to read it to verse 8. Romans chapter, Romans chapter 8. And I will read from verse 5. See what the Bible says there. It says, from verse 5, Romans chapter 8. From verse 5. The word of God says, For those who live according to the flesh, set themselves on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you want to please God, allow the spirit of God to lead you. In everything that we are doing, we will allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead us. You can see that Apostle Paul, when he was uh, making his word in Acts of Apostles chapter 15, he was saying about how they were to go to Mass, how they were to go to Asia. He said they were to go to Asia. He said the Holy Spirit forbade them. They were to go to Mysia. Holy Spirit forbade them. There's another city they wanted to go. Holy Spirit said, you don't go. He said, but at night, in the dream, he saw a man of Macedonia. And he said, come to Macedonia and rescue us. And that was what happened in chapter 16. And there was a great earthquake that happened when they were in jail, when they were in prison. The Holy Spirit knows what he wants us to be. And he knows what he wants you to become. He knows everything. Let the Spirit lead us. Let me tell you something. Um, because I've been there. It is not every time that you and your husband, we agree together. And it is not every time that you and your wife, we agree on, on a subject. You will just, well, let's do it like this, let's do it like this. But when the argument takes place, instead of continuing in such an argument, let the Holy Spirit lead us. We allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead us. We just say, okay, let's put everything to the Spirit of the Lord. In Acts of Passage chapter 21, from verse 11 to 14, in verse 11, the Bible says, Prophet Agabus, he took the belt of Paul and he said, so shall this person, the person who owns this belt, so shall he be bound in Jerusalem. He said, if this man goes to Jerusalem, he shall be bound. Verse 12, the Bible says, when we heard this, 
We persuaded him not to go up. Don't go up to Jerusalem. When we persuaded Paul not to go, the, the brethren persuaded God. Paul, the apostle said, no, don't go to Jerusalem. But Apostle Paul said something in verse 13. He said, what do you mean? That you are weeping, you are crying, and you make my, you make my spirit go low, go low. He said, I'm not going to Jerusalem only to be burnt, but to die for Christ's sake. I'm ready to die for my Lord Jesus. Now, you can see, someone said, people said, don't go. He said, it will go. Now, you see verse 14, where I'm going. He said, when we could not be able to persuade him, we say, let the spirit, let the will of God be done. So they allow the spirit of the Lord to do it. When Joseph, Jesus Iscariot was removed by the devil from the, from the, from the apostles. Now, in chapter 1 of Acts of Apostles, go and read it when you get home. They, by Holy Spirit, appointed Matthias. There is the spirit of the Lord that led them. The spirit led them that Matthias would be the one. Everyone needs to understand that there is nothing we can attain on earth without the spirit of God. It is the spirit that will lead us. It is the spirit that will make things happen. Everybody will be subject to the spirit of the Lord. Be subject to the spirit of God. Bring your complaint to the Lord. Your business is, you, you say it's my business. It's not your business. It's God's business. It's God who gave you that business. And he who gives you the business, he can take it away. And he who gives you the business can increase it. He knows how to do things. You do not know, you know, you don't control your life anymore. Anything you want to do, when the spirit, when the spirit says, I need you, I need you. The cord that was tied down. The Lord Jesus Christ said, if the owner asks you, why are you losing it? Say to him, the Lord is in need of him, or need of it. And when they said it to the owner, did the owner argue with them anymore? No. Every journey in life is not possible that we have to, we have to be in the same page, but at the same, at all the time. But we need to be in the same page. And in order to be in the same page, in order to attain our hands and objective, in order to make this happen, we need to allow the Holy Spirit. To all our, all our online viewers, as you are listening to me, and to everyone that is listening to me in this auditorium, let the Spirit take control. Take control of your life. Take control of your home. Take control of your business. Take control of your career. Take control of the lives of your children. Now, let us just look back. If in the, in the, in the, in the auditorium... Um, in the media, if you can give us Psalm 23 back. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. When God becomes our shepherd, Jesus Christ said in the book of uh, John chapter 10 verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, he said, gives his life, lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. Now, the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want the Lord is my son. I'm 33 again. I shall not want. Now, now, when God becomes our, when Jesus becomes our shepherd, because Jesus is the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus. When we are being led by the Spirit of the Lord, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And when we say Jesus, we say Holy Spirit. Why do I, what, what do you mean? Yes, the Bible said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 17. It said, therefore, the Lord is the Spirit. The Lord Jesus is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, see what God is doing, what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing when he's leading us. Number one, he said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Every sheep needs a pasture. Every need, every sheep needs pasture. Pasture means grass. Pasture means green grass. Where you are going to eat. He makes me to lie down in green pastor. Green pastor means a rich food. So with me that God is going to make provision. Spiritual provision and physical provision for you. When Jesus is leading us, he gives us provision. When some people say, I don't know what I'm going to eat today. I don't have money. Yes, we can go through that trial. But it's not forever. Trials come, but it doesn't last. Trials is not forever. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Yes, if God, when Jesus Christ becomes our shepherd, when Jesus Christ is leading us, sir, he makes you to lie down in green pastures. means that he makes provision for you. Provision, spiritual provision and physical provision. He makes provision for me. He makes provision for you. He makes provision for all of us. Sir. Spiritual provision, physical provision. Because he is the Lord that is taking care of you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say this to you. Every sheep... Depends on the shepherd. Every sheep, 
not well, because they, they have their own flock and they have the fence that surrounded them. Every sheep depends on the shepherd. The sheep cannot do anything without the shepherd. The shepherd feeds it or feeds them. The shepherd feeds them. So Jesus is your shepherd. He is not man. Man is not your shepherd. We make a mistake. I preached one thing in Africa sometimes ago. I said, majority of you African, you are looking on abroad for your help. Your help is not from abroad. Your help can be where you heard. I said, see Psalm 21, Psalm 121. I said, the Lord, he said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who makes the heaven and the earth. From above, not from abroad. From above, not from abroad. So if you can understand that and you get it very well, you will no longer be looking that somebody will help me. Somebody will bail me out. Somebody will take care of me. Somebody, but when Jesus Christ is leading us, he makes provision. Provision of shelter. Provision of, of, of nutrition. Provision of food. Provision, he makes provision for your life. He makes me to lie down in green pastor. We are, he led, the Bible said, he, he leads me beside still waters. When a, when a sheep eats grass, it needs water. And what I mean peace, to satisfy you with peace. When he gives you, the Lord did not lead you to a, he didn't lead you to a without, without pastors, without pastors, without grass. No, not, not grass that has withered, but green pastors. Green, God is rich. Jesus Christ is rich. The Bible says, yes, Agai 2 verse 8. He said, for silver is my gold is my says the Lord of hosts. Jesus is rich, is rich. Second Corinthians 8 verse 9. He said, we know the riches of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, so you are sick and my sake, he became poor so that we through his poverty might become rich. Jesus is rich. He's rich, he's wealthy. Yes, the word of God says, Proverbs 13 verse 22. A good man lives in inheritance to the children's children and the riches of the Gentiles, the wealth of the nation, the wealth of the Gentiles are stop for the righteous. So God is rich. And he's ready to give you the best. He leads me, he makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. Now, after you have done that one, the Bible says, he restores my soul. He restores my soul. He is, I took, I, I took, I, I take, I take food and I take water. I take food. Remember, Jesus Christ said, unless we eat his flesh, we have no life in us. He said in book of John 6 verse 48, I am the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. He makes us to eat the bread of life. He makes us to have the spirit of God in us. So he said that Lord makes provision. He makes provision for you. Now he said he restores my soul. Not only that he makes provision, he gives restoration. That everything that you have lost, everything that you have missed, everything that you have lost, everything that the enemies have stolen from you, that he is ready to restore them back. Because he said in Joel 2, verse 25, I will restore unto you all the years that the locusts have eaten. And the restoration of God, according to Job chapter 42, verse 10, Job chapter 42, verse 12, it was twice as much as he had before. And the Bible made us understand in Psalm 126, verse 1, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, when restoration took, takes place in Zion, we are like those that dream. That is what they call restoration. You will look at it like, am I dreaming? Is it a dream? Am I dreaming? But it's not a dream. It's a real word. Provision. Not only provision, restoration. May I say to you, everybody, we need restoration. You need to be restored. That if, let me tell you, majority of us, we are not in the level which God positioned us, ordained our life to be. And if we are not in that level, we need restoration to take us to that level. Abraham was called at the age of 75. He needed restoration. And the Lord gave him 100 more years so that he died at the age of 175. The Bible said in Job 42, verse, 7, verse 16 and 17, that after that, Job lived 140 years. So if everything was double for Job, it means that Job was 70 years when he entered into, temp into trial, into that temptation. So we think that he lived 210 years. That is the interpretation. So God is a God of restoration. He restores you. He gives you life. He gives you long life. He restores you. God will restore you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible now says, He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What does that mean? He gives me life. The, word of right, the, the path of righteousness is the way of the Lord. 
and the will of the Lord is life. It's not that it's, it gives me provision. It makes provision, spiritual provision. It makes physical provision. It makes restoration. Then it gives me life. God will give you eternal life. He gives me eternal life. He gives me eternal life. When Jesus is leading us, see all good things that is happening. Now, see verse 4. That is a tragedy. The tragedy there is not verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what are you doing there? He did not say, though he lead me by the shadow. No. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are on your own now. When you don't allow the Spirit of God to lead you, then you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? But he said, I shall fear no evil. <laughs> now, he said, for you are with me. He said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, every shepherd has a rod. Every shepherd has a staff. What do they do? To lead the sheep. To lead the sheep. Go this way, they will go that way. But every sheep that goes astray, what do they do? They, they beat it. The shepherd will beat it. So you don't need the rod of God. Because if you need the rod, you don't need the rod of God. You don't need that rod. But when we lead ourselves by ourselves, what happened? He said, I, you, then we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, God, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. He said, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, now, when God brought us back now, he said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. God will not prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Let me hear you, man. Then he said, you anoint my head. Then anointing comes upon you heavily in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, then your cup runs over. Your cup will run over in the name of Jesus Christ. Your cup will run over in the name of Jesus Christ. Your cup will run over in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when we allow the leading of the spirit, the Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Not problem will follow you. Not pain will follow you. Not failure will follow you. Not rejection will follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, pandemic will not follow you. Disaster will not follow us. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Everybody will look unto Jesus Christ as I'm going to close. And we can just confess Jesus Christ as your personal savior. If you can tell him today that you are my savior, you are all that I need, you are all that I want, you are all that I have, is ready to accept us. The, the, the Lord now told Adam, the Bible said God used to go to Adam in the cool of the day, if you read verse 8, that in the cool of the day, God would descend from heaven and go to Adam. And the Lord now said to Adam, on that day, after he had eaten the forbidden fruit, where are you? Do you know that that message is ringing and ringing and ringing to every one of us when we are in the wrong side? You can be in the wrong side when you are in the club where they are, where they are, where they are dancing half naked or naked. You are in the wrong side when you are thinking of manipulating figures. You are in the wrong side. You know, a man of God, not a man of God, let me say a man of the world, a man that people made, is a, a rob, and after he robbed, he said the reason why he robbed was because he wanted to use that money to build church for God. Just imagine, just, just imagine, you rob so that you can use it to, 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 to build a church for God. Are you telling me God cannot do it by himself? You have to rob the bank or rob somebody so that you can use the money to build church for God. What a mess. Uh, another one was, was taken uh, to use human being. Using human being. He said, it's because of the work of God. Uh, you, you can see how the madness that is in the world right now. What did I say? God says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. This is a psalm that we must be reading every day. It's a psalm that you have to read every day when you are going out. Put it in your head. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. When any message comes to you that you are about to die, just say no. That is not the message from God. Because God has spoken to me that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What do you want to follow you? I want the mercy of God. 
I want the goodness of the Lord. I want the goodness of the Lord. I want the mercy of the Lord. Let me just say one thing about the mercy of God. The mercy of God. It takes the mercy for you and I to survive on earth. Psalm 51 verse 1. He said, have mercy upon me, O Lord. According to your loving kindness. According to the multitudes of your tender mercies. If, this, if God does not have mercy, David wouldn't have lived. Because the Bible said in, in Ezekiel 18 verse 4, the soul that sins shall surely die. He sinned, he will have died. The, 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 it will have been cut off for the mercy of God. In Lamentation 3, in verse 22, he said, through God's mercies, we are not consumed, for his compassions fail not. So with, if the mercy of God was removed, we would have been consumed. He said, the mercy, he said, through God's mercy, we are not consumed, for his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Please give me Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. It's a true mercy. Mercy. All what you need today is the mercy of God. Mercy, mercy, mercy. We need the mercy of God. See what the Bible said here? Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we will have become like Sodom, we will have been like Gomorrah. If not for his mercy, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They were consumed. You and I will have been consumed. We are living in a, in a territory that in a territory of unrighteousness. We are gay, homosexuality. When homosexual is being, uh, is being appraised, bro, yes, uh, Luke 16, verse 15, Luke 16, 15 said, you are among those who justify yourself before men. God knows your heart. He said, what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. It is abomination that we are exalted. We are exalted we will have been perished. He said, unless the Lord has left us a remnant, we will have been like Sodom, we will have been like Gomorrah. It's what the mercy of the Lord has taken. It is the mercy of the Lord that has sustained you and I. Nathos is the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered.